So Angel, you are a Kundalini Reiki master, a, a teacher, a guided meditation facilitator, and a spiritual life coach. You mentioned releasing traumas at the soul and spiritual level. So, so what, what exactly does that involve? How do you get to those places? So a lot of times um, as we, you know, progress through this life journey um, from childhood or even infancy into adulthood, whenever there is a traumatic experience, anything that happens in our lives um, that causes some type of trauma, before it kind of really manifests in our physical bodies, it's always um, it affects uh, the spiritual body or, or the soul or the cellular body first. So a lot of times when people are have, have sickness or pain or diseases, things like that, it's because they may not have dealt with that trauma. Um, and so it has to go somewhere, right? But over time, it keeps suppressing it, but it's going to have to come out. And a lot of times it will manifest in a physical form. Right. So if we don't deal with it, if we don't you know, process it and, and the emotions that are attached to it, if we don't experience it and go through that motion, like grieve it, right? Or be angry about it or be sad or whatever. We, we, we have emotions. They were given to us, you know, uh, by our creator. So you, we have to process it, go through it, but then release it. The danger is staying there, like staying in that place you know, of like being a victim or that woe is me and, and not going forward, right? Or right. again, just suppressing things and, and, and not dealing with it. So what happens um, when we don't release and process traumatic events or pain or, you know, grief or whatever it may be, you know, we internalize it and then it causes blockages. It causes blockages in our energy centers, which is chakras or in our meridians, the cellular level. So whatever words you want to use, this causes blockages where now it's kind of hindering us from being clear hearing, clear feeling, clear seeing, clear knowing, and meaning from, you know, our higher self and, you know, your higher power, whatever that may be to you. So I, I totally believe that um, trapped emotion becomes sickness. I do yes. believe in that philosophy. If you were to explain to someone as to why you had that belief, like what real tangible evidence is there that trauma or trapped emotion actually becomes disease or block, uh, blockages or ailments in the body? So the good thing is um, Western medicine. So, you know, is really acknowledging um, you know, a lot of things that happen to us, traumas, and how it does affect us emotionally okay. and on a spiritual level. So that's the good news. So scientists is really coming in alignment with that. So, so first of all, when you look at the word dis-ease, if you break it down, it's dis-ease. So there is dis-ease out of balance in the body. So when the body is at dis-ease, it can cause disease in the body. It manifests. We are a triune being. So we're physical, we're emotional, and we're spiritual. Everything that happens to us affects us on all of those levels. Right. And, and when things are really go deep and we don't deal with it, like on that soul, you ever heard someone says like, oh my God, that person really hurt me. And women will say it more than men. But, <laughs> but you know, that man hurt me to my soul, you know, and a woman, we can understand that because that's like that deep, that deep wound that just like, whoo, that that's going to take a minute, like really to kind of like heal. But, but, you know, it could be anything that happened, abuse, you know, any form of abuse that is trauma to the soul. Right. And, you know, and I do believe that our soul, we have spiritual DNA. So meaning that just like how we, inherit physical characteristics um, of our, um, you know, ancestors or parents or grandparents, I, I believe that we also inherit whatever that trauma is in that and in, in from that soul, because the soul has DNA and that those spiritual DNA, it, it just crosses over. So nothing like goes away. It's, it's just kind of like, you know, I, I use the word recycle, but like <laughs> recycle. Right. So you have to break that. 
right? Like people, some people may call it generational curses or, you know, or, you know, whatever, but you have to kind of like, with cycles, like abuse, hereditary diseases, things like that. Right? So okay. you have to break the cycle. So you have to break that soul cycle. You have to break that soul trauma and that soul hurt. So that means that person now has to like, just really process that, acknowledge that, yes, this is in our bloodline. This is in our spiritual bloodline. And then whatever it is that resonates with them, it may be through prayers, you know, releasing negative energy. They might have a ceremony. I mean, whatever it is that you want to do, but to acknowledge it, release it so it can heal. Under the umbrella of this pandemic, we have seen a magnitude of sadness that yes. we have never, ever seen before in our time. Right. I agree. Every day we are, you know, um, bombarded with just bad news. You know, if it's not in your family, it's, it's someone that's dear to you, their family, their friends. You turn on the news. I mean, it's just so much. And then it's just like this cloud, like this energy cloud, even though some good stuff has come out of the pandemic. But there's a lot of sadness, a lot of trauma. Right. And so one of the things that was given to me to do um, for our March session was just to release sadness and really releasing the sadness that has become trapped in our physical bodies. And so this one particular morning when that was given to me and I was kind of like doing my morning stretches because I got to I got to move to get myself together. The morning I got to do a stretch. <laughs> I <hear you. laughs> but I just felt like, wow, you know, I'm holding so much sadness in the neck. I'm holding hmm. sadness in my shoulders. So as I was stretching and just kind of holding that stretch. I just said something so simple. I release all the sadness. Like, I don't know all of what it is. <laughs> I can't think of it mm -hmm. so much, right? But I release the sadness that has built up in my shoulders. And I just started naming different areas in my body where I felt discomfort and that tightness, like you said, and just felt like out of alignment. And I tell you, Lauren, I could just feel it. Like I could just feel it dissipating. I mean, like, you know, was all the pain gone? Discomfort? No, I wish, but I felt so much better. And I just began to do that every day. So each day, you know, I felt a little bit lighter, more mobility could move my neck and shoulders. So um, I just wanted to, to add that too, because we do, we hold, hold so much of residual type of energies and sadness in the physical body too. And sometimes right. it doesn't even really go like really that deep wound to the souls or the cellular level, the emotional level. It's just like you hear it and bam, it's just <laughs> attaching itself somewhere to, you You know, if that I guess that's sense. where things like um, uh, Kundalini yoga would come into play and, yeah. and you can help, you know, release some of that stuff. Yes. Yeah. And of course, Reiki can get down there energetically and uh, release some of that. Um, even if you're not really aware of it, that can, help with a lot of issues. Exactly. Um, so what I love about Reiki, so Reiki, the word Reiki is Japanese word, and it just means universal life force energy. So we all have the innate ability to heal. It's, it's just, we were born with it. And so, but, but if you don't know that you have the ability to heal, right? So if you, you know, knowledge is power, right? Well, if you don't know anything, <laughs> Like you're missing out on this power that we already have. So when I teach Reiki to someone and, and attune them, an attunement, all that means is that they are now awakened. Their mind is in alignment with what their spirit has already known. And I'm so I'm so thankful and grateful that science is, uh, is now acknowledging it. You know, when you believe in something, you know that it's real, but to have it really confirmed and and you just it just it just validates it even more. I had a guy on here uh, just recently. He is a um, he's a medium, and and it, it, you know it, it, I think what's so interesting about his story is that um, he didn't believe in any of that stuff. He actually went to the navy. It was very conventional life, and then he had some near death experiences and some stuff that happened, and. You know, just nine years ago, things shifted for him. And now he's not in the Navy anymore. He's a full-time medium. But the reason that I brought him on the show is because he's actually a part of a study at the University of Maryland where they 
they put them in CAT scans, they put them in uh, MRIs. Um, there's a number of devices um, that they use to study him and also about 25 other people who claim to hear voices or mm -hmm. to connect. And then the other part of the study is people who have schizophrenia uh, who also claim to hear voices, but they're not so positive. You know, the messages that they get are not um, empowering messages. Let's just put it that way, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then there's another group, uh, the control group, and that's the everyday person you pull off the street and then they, you know, would also analyze their brain with the EKG or the MRI. And they're really trying to map the brain and see what some of these energetics or some of these connections or when you connect to the collective consciousness or with whomever, like how it all works. But yeah, there's uh, study after study after study, and it is being validated that um, what I would have referred to as very strange, ridiculous stuff <laughs> is true and mm -hmm. based around yeah. science. Yes. Um, yeah, so it, it was a very interesting interview, and I, I think it's just fantastic that more projects like that are being are taking place to yeah. allow people to, even the most analytical people, to embrace um, some of these mindfulness practices. Yes, I think it's awesome too. And they really see the results and it works. It, it really works. It is pretty interesting. I mean, um, I, I know as a society, guy, guys are not encouraged to um, let stuff go, let stuff out. And you get all this, I don't know, I, I guess at the very least, you get tension in your shoulders and you just feel more and more uptight. And the more and more uptight you are, it can affect any, like you were saying, blood pressure, but uh, then it just kind of stems further and deeper and deeper. And then worse things happen. You know, for me, you know, I, I've actually been uh, going through some tough stuff with a friend of mine. Um, and, you know, you were talking about earlier that people, when you, um, hold your emotions in, it tends to create larger problems, right? Mm -hmm. And of course, I, I am trying to be as open and, and free as, as possible. And I'm going through, through some difficult times. And um, I'm actually what most would say, you know, kind, kind of a mess, like I've really been releasing a lot, right? Mm -hmm. So from the outside looking in, I'm a complete mess, but from where I am, based on what I'm learning about emotions and letting it flow, boy, I've, I've been letting it flow. <laughs> so, um, so I think that's a very health, healthy thing. And um, yeah. you know, I, I wish more people became, were more comfortable letting their emotions flow because I think that would result in um, ultimately less trauma in the body. Exactly. We have, we, we not, we're not created to just hold on to stuff. You know, we, we, we can't handle that. Our vessels are too fragile. And I want to say to you, when you said that you're a mess, I don't, you're not a mess. You know, I, I, you're being gracefully broken to be built. Oh, I like that. Gracefully I, broken. To yeah. be built up better, stronger, more courageous, because your journey is, is, you know, it's your journey, but all the things that you've gone through, it's not for you. It's to help somebody else. So, and the wonderful thing is because you are a man and you are acknowledging and you, and you, and you want to experience this journey of, of a higher truth. Right. right. And I think that's so important because that's encouraging and giving men that freedom to do it, then like, okay, that's okay, Lauren, do it, all right, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> right, but, right, you know, right. it's, but that, because our men, you know, our men need that. And it's so sad that our society has taught our men, you know, you know, be, be a soldier. Right. Don't cry. Don't Hold show it in. <laughs> yeah. 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 Let it, let it yeah. stew. Come on. <laughs> exactly. right. But you're being gracefully broken. And I applaud you because that oh, well, takes you. courage. It takes courage. Yeah. It takes a lot of courage. Yeah. Well, I think so. Yeah. 
(laughs) (laughs) Me too. That's all it matters. (laughs) So one of the things um, that I want to talk about, you know, you and I have spoke about it um, just um, in our conversations, but, you know, where um, the spiritual life coach, um, the, the, um, your soul life purpose. And I'm really excited about that because, you know, when I, my students and clients that have crossed my path, it's, it's like a lot of them kind of know their purpose. Some really like, yeah, I don't know yet. <laughs> and, but the ones that kind of know, but they might be fearful, you know, mm-hmm. are doubting themselves, whatever it is that's making them hold back. So I think, I think it is vital that we know what our life purpose is or our soul life purpose because we all have one whether you want to acknowledge it or not we all have a purpose we are all you know the people there are certain people that are assigned to us to help and so just like we're pouring into them but then there are people you know that are assigned to us to pour into us right so it is it's just it's just vital and the reason why it's vital Because a lot of people who don't really know their sole purpose or, you know, what their destiny is, it's like they might, you know, they're always trying to, you know, I don't know, do the next thing. Okay, I'm going to excel at my career. I'm going to make, you know, six figures. So when they achieve that and they feel like they've arrived, but it's still something missing. Okay, I'm going to do this hobby. I'm going to build this car. I always wanted to build this Corvette from the ground or whatever. And then once you do that, I'm like, I'm still not happy. So they're always chasing something, right? Because it's a void within. Because you're not fulfilling your soul purpose. So you're going to always be chasing after something. You're going to always be putting a band-aid. But once you know your soul purpose, and I'm going to tell you the difference, you can have, when they say money can't buy happiness, that is so true because if you're not, you can have all the money in the world, but if you don't know your purpose, I mean, we see it, right? People got my poor people, working people like us, like, why did all this make been suicide? Or they got this going on in our minds. We're like, what? You know, but <laughs> It's, it's, you know, but it's true. Money, money can't because you can be so poor. You might not know where your next meal is coming from. But if you know your purpose, when you know your purpose, you have a joy. And it's a joy that the world cannot give you, nor can it take it away. Can, you could be in the center of a storm, but you're, you're, you're standing. That storm is going all around you in the eye of that storm. But you got peace and you got joy because you know who you are. You know what you're walking in your purpose and your destiny. And our purpose and our destiny really is always to serve. It's never about us. It's always to serve. And when you know your lane, because you got to stay in your lane, but when you know your lane, and you know your purpose, I don't care what's going on. You just have this peace and you just have this understanding. And you say, look, you know what? If I die tomorrow, I know that I did what I was meant, uh, sent here to do. It's the difference. So that's why it is vital like the air we breathe, hmm. you know? And there's so many people that are walking around. I call them, you're just, they're walking around, they're dead. They're just dead because they don't, they don't really know the value of who they are. That's sad. Right. That's sad. To not know and, and you can you can help people get on this course. Yes. 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 Wonderful. So with the with the with that, you know, it's it's some healing. So, you know, some Reiki, some God healing meditation, because you we gotta, you know, remove blockages and release. So now that that right. the client can be clear hearing, clear seeing, clear feeling, so they can hear from the spirit realm. So that will help. So you can't. You can't start somewhere until you deal with some of the issues, the things that are blocking, and then to educate the client. Now, these are the tools because it's a process, you know, the process. So would you equip them with the tools and things so now that they can incorporate that in their lives as they're progressing in their journey and walking in their destiny? So I'm really excited about that. Thank Um, you for doing what you do. Yeah. Really, truly. Um, Thank you. Thank you for having me.